Good evening. It's Brother Readout for this uh, message on a Sunday night. Thankful to be able to join you by way of video. I would prefer that we be gathered together in person and perhaps that day will come not many years hence. <laughs> uh, hopefully just a matter of weeks. Tonight I would like to share with you the details of Peter's denials of Christ. It's been on my heart for a long time and I know that I did teach this to you in a, um, a more elaborate form perhaps when we were going through the Foundations of Life lessons several years ago, lesson two, the timetable in the tomb. But it's been on my mind a great deal, particularly what it took to bring Peter to the place of repentance that allowed him to become the great leader and man of God. The text that's been heavy for me, three of them that speak to the same event, the same moment. Mark 14, 72, which said, and when he thought thereupon, he wept. Matthew 26, 75 added a detail, and he went out and wept bitterly. And then Luke 22, 62 repeated it, put it together. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. There may be something about weeping and weeping bitterly that comes after thinking things through that has a powerful impact on our heart's ability to implement repentance. The fact of the matter is when we harmonize the Gospels, put them in a chronological order, a sequential order of the way things happened, including all of the details, we will discover that Peter actually denied Jesus 10 times, not three, 10. But all 10 of those denials were not the denials the Lord prophesied about. The Lord mentioned specific form of denials. But Peter denied being a disciple of Jesus seven times. In addition to that, he also denied knowing Jesus three times. And we're going to see how Peter was put under relentless pressure to identify himself with Jesus Christ. We're going to find out that the Lord always establishes circumstances which will make you prove what you really are. So when Jesus was taken from the garden, arrested, Peter followed the multitude that were with the arresting officers, but he followed them from a distance. John also followed. And both Peter and John went to the palace, but Peter stayed outside of the palace at the door while John went in. We're told this in Matthew 26, 58, but Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest palace in Mark 14, 54, and Peter followed him afar off in Luke 22, 54, and Peter followed afar off. John 18, 15 says, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple, that disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. 
John returned to the door and spoke to the maid who was the doorkeeper. John then brought Peter into the palace in her sight. This probably enabled her to identify Peter as one of the disciples in the moments following. We're told in Matthew 26, 58, and went in, Mark 15, 14, 54, even into the palace of the high priest. And it's important to note that the Greek word translated palace is aule or court. Peter entered the vestibule of the courtyard of the high priest's palace. John 18, 16 said, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Peter wouldn't have gone in without John's urging. The doorkeeper maid then asked Peter when he came in, if he was not also one of the disciples of Jesus. This all took place in the porch or the vestibule, the alley of the palace court. You find it in John 18, 17. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, art not thou also one of this man's disciples? And that's when Peter denied being a disciple for the first time. This is not the same as denying Christ. And it is not one of the three denials prophesied by the Lord. In John 18, 17, Peter's answer was, I am not. I'm not one of his disciples. Peter then left the courtyard, that particular part of the court inside the gate, and joined the bondsmen and officers who were standing near the door by a coal fire, a fire made of coals, that they had just made for themselves to be warm. You find it in John 18, 18. And the servants and officers stood there who had made the fire of coals, for it was cold and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself to note that they were near the door in the porch or the vestibule of the high priest palace. <clears throat> and note also that the Greek word translated fire is anthrakidion, a fire which is made of coals. And this kind of fire is made for heat, not light. Some of the servants in the midst of the court kindled a different fire, this one, to give both heat and light. Find it in Luke twenty two fifty five, 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, no longer this fire by the door, which was for heat, but in the midst of the hall. And again, the word hall is aule or court. And the word translated fire is pure, a fire from bundled fuel used both for heat and light, a different fire. Peter joined them at this fire made for light as well as heat and sat down among them to better see how the trial would end. It's, we're specified this in Matthew 26, 58, and sat with the servants to see the end. And Mark 15, 54, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And Luke 22, 55, and were set down together. Peter sat down among them. I want you to note that that fire that's spoken of there is phos. It's a fire mostly used for light but also for heat. While Caiaphas, in, as it happens, the second of the illegal trials, while Caiaphas was demanding a verdict, 
that Jesus was guilty of claiming to be God, Peter was undergoing an unrelenting pressure to identify himself with Jesus Christ. While Peter sat with the servants at the fire they had kindled, a young woman spoke to him. <clears throat> not to the people sitting there and not in the form of a question, but rather with a statement that he had also been with Jesus, meaning that he was also a disciple of Jesus Christ. We're told it in Matthew 26, 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. And Mark 14, 66 says it, And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Now, some translation notes the word mist, miso, and in the middle, meaning in the center of the lower court, the lower level of the court, and the word without exo, outside it, meaning not in the main or upper level of the court. The word beneath, kato, a place below, some steps below the level of the main room of the court. It is not outside of the palace court, but both words describe a place in the palace, in the courtyard, but not in the main area of the courtyard. And it's at this occasion when this other gal came and spoke directly, you, were also with Jesus of Galilee. Peter denied being a disciple for the second time. This time he did it by pretending that he did not understand what she was saying. He was probably pretending not to understand her language as well. This is not the same as denying that he knew Jesus. Matthew 26, 70. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. In Mark 14, 68, but he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. Another woman saw Peter as he sat by that fire for light foes that they had kindled. She took a very close and intense look at him. She then told the people there that Peter was in fact also a disciple with Jesus at one time. You find it recorded in Luke twenty-two, fifty-six. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. Note, Peter was no longer actively warming himself, according to the text, just sitting by the fire. And that pressure brought Peter to the first occasion in which he denied that he knew the Lord Jesus Christ. It's recorded in Luke twenty two fifty seven, and he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. This denial is not just a denial of being a disciple or a denial of understanding, but a denial of knowing Jesus. Then Peter left the hall and went back out to the porch of the court, the vestibule near the door. And he no doubt did it to escape this unrelenting and increasing pressure. 
And while he was there, the first crowing of the cock occurred. This crowing comes near the end of the third watch of the night, and it's recorded in Mark 14, 68. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. Now it's translation note, the word porch is proalion, the vestibule, an area between the door and the lower court. In that porch, Peter stood to warm himself at the coal of fires or the fire of coals. And it's recorded at this time in John 18, 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Now, while Peter was warming himself, the heat was applied again. The maid who had spoken to Peter before in Matthew 26, 69 and 70, and Mark 14, 66 and 68, upon seeing him again, began to tell those standing there that Peter was one of the disciples. It's recorded in Mark 14, 69, and a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. And Peter denied being a disciple for the third time. And we're told in Mark 14, 70, and he denied it again. So the maid who had spoken to Peter before upon seeing him again, began telling those that uh, Peter was one of the disciples. And I, I want you to notice this little tidbit that something changed when Caiaphas started demanding a death sentence against Jesus. All of a sudden, in these pressures put on Peter, Jesus and any of his followers became them. Before it was one of his followers, now it's them. There are people who will accuse you of being a Christian, but when Christians are out of favor, you'll become one of them, not just a Christian. They will separate themselves from identification with you. And it was on this occasion when she accused Peter that time that he denied being a disciple. Oh, I'm not one of them. He denied for the third time. And you can read this in the scriptures when you take them in order and combine the gospels in sequence. After a few minutes of this third denial of being a disciple, a man accused Peter of being one of the disciples. This is in Luke 22:58. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also one of them. But Peter denied being one of them, being a disciple for the fourth time. It's recorded in Luke twenty-two fifty-eight, 58. And Peter said, Man, I am not. So Peter had denied being a disciple to both the maid and the man. Because of that denial, the group of people there asked him if he were not really one of the disciples of Jesus. That's what's said in John 18, 25. They said, therefore unto him, art not thou also one of his disciples? And Peter denied being a disciple for the fifth time. John 18, 25. He denied it and said, I am not. 
but there was no easy escape for Peter because another maid, not the maid in Matthew 26, verses 69 and 70, or Mark 14, 66 through 68, or Mark 14, 69, but another maid saw Peter and told everyone in the porch vestibule that he had been with Jesus, a disciple. Matthew 26, 71 records it. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Note, this is when he was gone out into the porch, and that should really be translated, and having gone out into the porch. This demonstrates that Mark 14, 69 and 70, and Luke twenty two fifty eight 58, and John 18, 25, take place between Matthew 27, 70, and the next verse, Matthew 27, 71. No one writer gave us a complete sequential chronology of these events. Well, this additional pressure led to Peter's second denial that he knew the Lord Jesus Christ. But it was different than the first because this is the first time that Jesus denied with an oath. It's recorded in Matthew 26, 72. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Then a bondsman of the high priest a kinsman of, the, of Malchus, whose ear Peter had cut off when Jesus was being addressed, thought that he remembered seeing Peter with Jesus at that time and questioned him about it. And he probably did it in an accusatory manner. John 18, 26, one of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? But Peter denied being with him, being a disciple, for the sixth time. John 18, 27. Peter then denied again. So in about an hour's time, Peter had denied that he was a disciple six times and denied knowing Christ twice, one of those times with an oath. That's when another man, not a maid, but a man, confirmed the testimony of the others who had identified him as being a disciple and <clears throat> identified him as a disciple and a Galilean. Peter's denial this time probably included feigning ignorance of the man's language as he had done before for the maid. And this is recorded in Luke twenty-two fifty-nine. 59. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter denied being a disciple for the seventh time. It's recorded in Luke twenty-two sixty. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. So after a few minutes, 
the crowd of people there decided to confront Peter again, <clears throat> this time as a group. They insisted that he really was one of the disciples, pointing out the fact that he spoke like a Galilean and was in fact a Galilean in spite of his denials. It's recorded in Matthew 26, 73. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou art also art one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee. And Mark 14, 70 says, and a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. Only by using language a disciple of Jesus would never use cursing and swearing and denying knowing the Lord. Could Peter hope to convince them that he was not a disciple? This is Peter's third denial that he knew the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the fulfillment of the prophetic word of warning that the Lord Jesus, our all-knowing God, gave to him. It's recorded in Matthew 26, 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And Mark 14, 71. But he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And just as the Lord had prophesied, the cock did not sound his morning crowing until Peter had denied knowing Jesus three times. This was, of course, the second crowing of the cock. And the second crowing of a cock in the early morning usually occurs just before sunrise near the end of the fourth watch in the night as recorded in Matthew 26, 74, and immediately the cock crew, Mark 14, 72, and the second time the cock crew in Luke 22, 60, and immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew, and John 18, 27, and immediately the cock crew. <clears throat> the word immediately is translated from the Greek word that means presently in Matthew 26, 74, and in John 18, 27, another word is used, which means forthwith or soon in Luke 22, 60. None of the verses use the word which means at once or immediately. Luke 22, 60 says, as yet he was speaking, meaning while he was still making that third denial. Uh, making denials plural, not necessarily this particular one, but while he was yet denying the cock crowed. And at that cock's signal crowing, Jesus turned and looked upon Peter. Luke twenty two sixty one 61 says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Then Peter remembered the prophetic word of warning Jesus had given him. Matthew 26, 75 says it. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. 
in Mark 14, 72. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Luke twenty two sixty one 61 records it. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. The Lord Jesus had told all his disciples the purpose of prophecy, and he had also told Jesus, or told Peter, let not your heart be troubled. Peter then, with this in his mind, and Jesus looking at him, allowed the word of the Lord access to his heart. And he went all the way out of the palace, out of the court, to weep in privacy. Luke twenty-two sixty-two, And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Matthew 26, 75, and he went out and wept bitterly. And Mark 14, 72, and when he thought thereupon, he wept. See, true repentance is not possible until one recognizes the Lord's nature in contrast to one's own. That's what I have for you today. Thank you. Bow your heads with me. Lord, we do appreciate your unwillingness to let us hide and to let us pretend. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to the places of repentance. You'll receive the praise and glory for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good night.